There are less houses on the market, again, and it's going to continue that way, well, for a while. In this video, we're going to go over the single-family and common markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update, and let's talk about the size of the Massachusetts state economy. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I'm here to help. I mentioned last week that I felt the summer market was here, and the data this week, well, it verifies it. But there can still be a feeding frenzy. It reminds me of a fishing tournament a couple of weeks ago that I was in. Fished and fished all day long. Caught a 46 inch striper. Fun fact, if I had measured it correctly, then I would have actually won that tournament. But it was a slow day, all other than that one bite. Another boat, they lucked out and found a blitz. They caught nine fish in an hour, and they were quiet for the rest of the day. The market, well, it's like that. It's quiet. But if you underprice a house, especially if you're under the $600,000 price range, then you can get a blitz. And you can ask one of my clients all about it this weekend. He was one of 13 offers on a property and bid $75,000 over asking price. The offer that won was higher with no contingencies. We'd waived the home inspection contingency, but still had that financing contingency. And yes, he is a champion of a buyer and has been through underwriting and is fully approved. But sometimes you just can't win them all. But now let's jump into the single family market. We currently have 3,760 houses on the market. Now inventory, it went down this week. I think it's safe to say that the summer market is officially here. Now the inventory levels are following the historic trend, but to compound inventory issues, the gap between the levels in previous years, well, that continued to widen. At this time last year, there were 5,528 homes on the market. This means that we currently have 1,768 fewer units or 32% fewer houses on the market than the same time last year, and 870 fewer homes on the market or 18.8% less inventory than the previous all-time low in 2021. With that historical trend, you can see that year over year, this week is the first week of a slight inventory pullback. This will continue for the next four or five weeks. Then we will see a big drop in inventory on Labor Day weekend with inventory levels slowly starting to increase after that. Now I can say with full confidence that we will not hit the 4,500 inventory mark this year. We most likely will never surpass 4,000 units. This will be the lowest inventory year in our history. Attention to all the buyers out there. The market dynamics are not going to get any better anytime soon. Well, unless if interest rates go way up, which is a double-edged sword in and of itself. We had 894 single-family homes come on the market this week. This means that we were 26.9% off the amounts of new listings that came on the market this time last year as there were 1,224 homes listed. This is two weeks in a row when the amount of houses listed were off by 26.9%. It's a little fun fact. And when in the 4th of July holiday, the four-week rolling average is 884 units. We had 985 single-family homes go under agreement last week. Now, this is compared to the 1,216 homes that went under agreement this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 19%. Including the 4th of July data, the four-week rolling average is 925 units. It will most likely be next week's data that begins to show the slowdown on the buyer demand side. Now, this was a little less balanced this week with the buyer demand coming in stronger than the seller's supply. Inventory was off by 27%, while sales were off by only 19%. There were 728 single-family homes that went under agreement last week for an average sales price of $798,000 and a median sales price of $643,000 and months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a strong seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually fell to 1.38 months, compared to last week's 1.47 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market for sellers. Now, real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,214 condos on the market as of Monday. Like the single family market, inventory started to pull back this week. The summer market is the summer market. It doesn't matter what type of real estate you have. It's nice out. People go on vacation, and those people consist of not only buyers, but also sellers. We currently have 584 fewer condos on the market today than we did today last year. This means that inventory is off by 19.3% compared to the same time last year when there were 2,798 condos on the market. Now, there were 406 condos that came on the market this week. The four-week rolling average, including the 4th of July holiday, 
is 410 units. There are 487 condos that came on the market this week last year, which means that we were 81 units or 16.6% shy of last year's new inventory numbers. Now, there are 410 condos that went under agreement this week. The four-week rolling average is 381 units. But when comparing it to the same week last year, it wasn't that bad. Again, in 2022, we put 463 condos under agreement. This means that the level of sales were off by only 11.5%. So inventory was down by 16.6% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 11.5%. There were 320 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $793,000 and that median sales price of $588,000. Months of inventory, it decreased to 1.73 months from last week's 1.83 months. Now, do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and just helps push the video out to more people? And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Now, interest rates have ticked up slightly for the week. I don't really see any market movers this coming week. We have the new home sales numbers and pending home sales numbers, which are, yes, all real estate related. But again, I don't really see anything on the docket moving rates in any way significantly. I thought this was cool, though. Not necessarily real estate related, but state related, which becomes real estate related. Check this out. Visualizing America's $20 trillion economy by state. Massachusetts is a monster in New England, but it is dwarfed by some economies when you look at the entire United States. Massachusetts ranks number 12 in the country with $544 billion of economic output and number three in the country for personal income per capita with $84,945. What a surprise, Washington, D.C. ranked number one on the income per capita with close to ninety-seven grand. If California was a country, then it would hit rank among the top 10 biggest gross domestic products in the world. It would rank number five, to be exact, which would mean they would fall just below Germany and Japan. While Texas economy is comparable to the size of large countries such as Russia or South Korea, Altogether, California, Texas, and Florida account for almost one-third of the country's entire economic output, combining for $6.3 trillion in real estate GDP. Now, the article notes that many of the largest state economies are fueled by strong urban populations. These metropolitan cities are the economic engines of the country, driving innovation and attracting new talent. And this got me thinking about the commercial real estate problems that we have talked so much about. Companies are cutting their footprints. Many people, well, they're staying virtual. As this newer trend becomes settled, then will this shake the economic titans? Could California see enough people leave LA for the mountains of Utah? Or Massachusetts see enough people leave to live free in New Hampshire? And if that happens, will that have a large impact on real estate? Just throwing out some questions, which we'll all have to wait to see the answers on. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you are looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just Fill in your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, well, drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer you. Until next time, 